Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome everyone to this edition of Insights. I'm your host, Felina Jones, and today we'll be looking at the Shriners organization and we'll see how their philanthropy efforts are helping people around the community. Thank you so much for joining me today, Roy and Ronald. How are Thank you guys doing? Wonderful. Doing great, great, thank you. Right, and so you guys are getting ready for a big parade this weekend, isn't that right? Yes. yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the parade? Well, the parade starts uh, at the courthouse mm -hmm. on Chisholm Street. I believe that's 9th. It'll be going down Chisholm Street to 2nd. That's where it'll end. And it'll step off, at, it'll start at 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon. And we hope to see as many Alpena residents as possible. Okay, and tell me a little bit about why you guys come to Alpena to put this parade on. Every five years, we like coming here. Mm -hmm. We go to, every year we go to a different city in Michigan, and we try to get up here every five years if possible, and we've been, had a pretty good record doing it. We uh, love this place. The people treat us just wonderful. Uh, and I wish we could come here every year. <laughs> But so, yeah, we're, we really look forward to coming up here. And so what's the, what's the goal in the parade? Why, why host one? What we do is, oh, go ahead, Roy. No. What we do every year is we initiate candidates mm -hmm. at this particular ceremonial, and we like to show them off to the public. Once they're initiated and become new Shriners, they'll be in our parade. Mm -hmm. Along with a lot of our units, uh, you'll see some motorcycles and some clowns, and, and we do this to get the word out okay. as to what we do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, well, Shriners, all we do is we wear these little fezzes mm -hmm. and we do parades, mm -hmm. but we do a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the things that you guys do? We own uh, 19 orthopedic hospitals and three burn centers and spend almost $800 million each year for medical care for children birth to 18 years old mm -hmm. at no cost to the patients or the parents. Okay. And that we have orthopedic hospital in Chicago, we have burn center and the closest one is in Cincinnati, but we have three of them uh, throughout the United States and the 19 orthopedic hospitals uh, are sent locally are not, they're centrally located uh, to take care of the kids in that area. Okay, and how did this organization kind of start? Back in 18, I think it was 50 some, Dr. Fleming and a mover star were on a ship going to uh, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And the Masonic Order is a very serious organization. Uh, there is no drinking, no smoking, no Nothing. <laughs> so they wanted to have some fun. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, between the two of them, as I understand it, come up with these degrees and to, they're in, it's an initiation uh, into this organization. Uh, now we do have alcohol, uh, and but there's no smoking in our, in our facilities and stuff like that. But it's a, it's a fun organization. It's a place where the, the guys can have fun and not be serious like it, it previously was in the Masonic Order. Okay, and so the parade that you guys do every year, is that a kind of tie into what you're saying about having fun and opening up people's view of the organization? Absolutely. And like I said, we get out there and, and we try to let people know what we do. Mm -hmm. we, do we just don't parade. We go out there and say, this is why we're parading. Mm -hmm. We want you to know that we're supporting 22 children's hospitals throughout the country including Hawaii and Mexico okay. and Canada. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of money to do this. Right. So you may ask, where does this money come from? Mm -hmm. How do you get $800 million a year? Mm -hmm. Well, over the last hundred and some years, Shriners have been earning money and they send it to our Imperial, which is in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, our endowment fund is in excess of $9 billion. Okay, the money derived from that endowment fund plus donations from Shriners all over the world now, that way they can come up with this $800 million a year to operate these hospitals. 
Okay. There also a, when we were in our peak period, mm -hmm. there was a million Shriners, and somebody come up with an uh, idea of everybody donating a, a hundred dollars. So that therefore made a hundred million dollars. Okay. And we have a hundred million dollar club. It's not too active now, but it's it's still out there, and anybody money. can <laughs> right. anybody can join. That. Right. Well, through the parades, is that another way that you fundraise as well? On occasion, we are offered donations from various companies uh, that sponsor some of the units mm -hmm. because this is just going to be Shriners in this parade. But there's other parades out there throughout the communities that businesses call up and say, "Hey, we'd like a couple of these groups." to be in our parade okay. and we would give you a hundred bucks if you do. Right. So these guys spend three hundred dollars of their own money in gas to get there for a hundred dollars <laughs> and they give the money to the Shriners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Okay so um, for this weekend's parade what are some of the things that will highlight? It'll highlight our new Shriners, mm -hmm. it'll highlight some of our groups, our officers will be uh, in the parade so, and they'll be separate from everybody else, and uh, you'll be walking, won't you? Yeah, other than maybe one, or uh, one, one fellow. The, Just had a knee replacement. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he might want to give that knee a rest <laughs> yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But if we can walk, we will. Okay. And, uh, I don't know if he wants me in the parade, but I'd like to be there, too, just to wave at everybody and let, us, let them know that we're here. And Yes. Now, Alpena is a very important part. And why is it so important? Of, of in the state because you have several vans up here mm -hmm. that belong to our temple okay. and what these vans do is they take children to the hospital that need orthopedic care and those trips are made by Shriners. They're the drivers and they drive to Chicago and believe it or not we've got drivers that have made it in excess of 200 trips back and forth to Chicago and that's a lot. Right. Now our transportation costs just for our temple exceeds a quarter of a million dollars a year. So that's why we're out hustling for money. Oh, okay. So. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna stop you right there and we're gonna take a break. But when we come back from Insights, we will go more in depth into how Shriners are helping the local community. Welcome back everyone to Insights. Before we went to break, we were talking to Roy and Ronald who are part of the Shriners organization. And before we went to the break, we were talking about how Alpena residents are affected by the Shriners organization. Can you um, touch a little bit on that again? Sure. Uh, any community is, rep is, is affected by the Shriners anymore. Uh, we give free care to children and I don't care where you go where are you gonna get anything free anymore mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it just doesn't happen right. uh, about three years ago we started taking insurance for the first time that doesn't mean that you can't get treated without it mm -hmm. if the child has insurance through his parents we bill that insurance company for whatever we can get okay. if the family has no insurance doesn't matter okay. and when we take the children down to the hospital, the parents can come with them. Mm -hmm. In fact, a parent or guardian has to be there. And if an overnight stay is required, the parents stay with the child mm -hmm. at no cost to them. Okay. So you have a facility where parents can stay within the hospital? No, we, we pay for a hotel okay. and all their food and the cost of the trip down there in our vans. Okay. It's, don't cost them nothing. Okay, and how many children do you guys treat um, within the state of Michigan per year? To, I'm gonna say the last that I know was about 1,100 kids. Okay, and these kids range from what ages? Birth to 18 years old. Okay, and- Now one thing to keep in mind, excuse me, but one thing to keep in mind, if we start treating a patient, a child, mm -hmm. and they reach 18 years of age, that treatment continues no matter what age they are, as long as they started their treatment prior to 18. Okay. Am I correct? That's correct. As long as they can, they can actually uh, do something to better the, yes. the health of that child. Okay. Then they can. And what kind of health issues do the hospitals um, aid children with? Birth defects, cleft palate, cleft, cleft lip, uh, uh, scoliosis. Uh, uh, there's so, just so many uh, things that 
they have down there, even uh, MS and stuff that they have. Uh, maybe they can't treat the child mm -hmm. for that, but they have a clinic down there that that helps the parents deal with those uh, diseases. And, right. and uh, we, we have some of the world-renowned uh, orthopedic surgeons mm -hmm. uh, down there and in our employee, and it's, uh, it's amazing. The kids love it down there, and they'll call up, can I go to the hospital? <laughs> and that don't happen very often, and right. they, the doctors just love them down there, and the kids love the doctors. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's something to see. Uh, I know there's uh, been a lot of kids. Uh, birth defects is very trying. I know of a child that has, was born with no arms mm -hmm. or no legs, mm -hmm. and it's hard. Right. So you guys really specialize in birth defects? Not necessarily. There's cleft lip, cleft palate. Uh, scoliosis is a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we can even, some types of birth defects, okay. uh, I mean, not birth, def birth defects, but uh, where they have the skin on their face is, okay. is dark, mm -hmm. uh, and they can take that and uh, clean it up, or because it's embarrassing for the kids, uh, especially in school, mm -hmm. because the other kids pick on them. Right, and then that goes into a question that I had for you guys. Why focus on children? Who needs help more than children? It's a in. child, a child, with any type of physical problem, needs to be helped, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's just there's no reason for a child to go through life without getting help. Mm -hmm. And so many people don't know about us, and all they got to do is call a Shriner, mm -hmm. or we'll give you a phone number. Mm -hmm. And before the break, we were talking about that there's also um, Shriners here locally in Alpena. How do they get connected with you guys from out of town? They are part of, our, <coughs> excuse me, they're a part of our Shrines Temple, and they wanted to have vans up here. Okay. To, so we didn't have to come uh, from Flint, Saginaw, Bay City area, clear right. up to here to pick them up. So we brought vans up here, keep them here, and they can go down to Chicago rather than come up here and then go back to Chicago, then come up here and go back to drop the van off. Mm -hmm. A lot of unnecessary miles right. and a big expense for us. Okay, so the Shriners that are here locally, what is their role? Well, their role is we have a uh, group of people down in Clio where our main office is, mm -hmm. and they coordinate all this stuff. They coordinate it with the hospitals, they coordinate it with the patients that need up here in the northern areas that need to have appointments made, and we, co and we coordinate that with the Shriners up here. We call the drivers and say, okay, on uh, July 15th, you're going to be picking up so-and-so at such and such an address, okay. and the child and his mother will be being transported to Chicago. Okay. And there'll, there'll be two drivers that'll pick up the family and take them to Chicago, and if an overnight stay is necessary, so be it. Mm -hmm and they will stay there until those people are ready to come home. So um, the vans here in Alpena really give that accessibility um, for parents and children who need to go to the hospital maybe in Chicago or downstate in Michigan. No, we have we, no Shriners Hospital in Michigan. Okay, it's just, it's just the office in Michigan. Right? Oh, yes. yes. Okay, okay. Well, we do have our orthopedic hospital in Chicago and a burn center uh, in Cincinnati and we do a tremendous amount with the donations in research. We are uh, probably the best in the world for burns. Uh, they can take That's a little right. patch of skin. Mm -hmm. They've developed a uh, machine that rolls that skin out and makes it like a, a expanded metal, okay. and it'll make a, a big piece of skin. That's, that burn scar has to be covered, and we've had uh, Several hospitals call us and say they've lost the kid. Uh, or the, I shouldn't say kid. The, the child is starting to go uh, into uh, like their liver, kidneys, and stuff start 
backing up or closing down, um, we call Cincinnati and we have a, a jet with a physician and two nurses. They come up and they prep that child and load them on the, it's a um, small jet and take them down to Cincinnati. That's all, uh, we pay for it, about okay. $4,000 the last I knew for that jet trip up here. Right. And uh, so it's, it's real neat. Uh, I've been down to Cincinnati quite a few times. Great. It's not something you want to see. Right, right. But um, again, just opens up the, the accessibility for parents and children to be treated. That's right. Absolutely. All right. Well, after the break, we'll go more into depth about how the Shriners organization here in Michigan can help Alpena residents here locally. Welcome back from the break, everybody. Today we're talking to Roy and Ronald from the Shriners organization. And I wanted to touch on your attire. You both have a headdressing on. Can you tell me a little bit about it? When Dr. Fleming and this movie star, they needed something that was unusual. So they picked the Eastern attire and that's where it's from. It's from the Middle East okay. where they wore uh, uh, what they call a fez, or we, we call it a fez. Mm -hmm. well, theirs was plain, and we put the jewels on. Okay, and what does the jewel symbolize and everything that's on well, the fez? Well, mine, my, <laughs> that's the shrine uh, cemetery is the center. Okay. Uh, the name on the top is our shrine center, and my office is underneath. Uh, I was potentate in 06, and 13, okay. so that's what mine says. Okay, and you guys both have some jewelry as well. The ring was, represents the fact that you were a potentate, okay. which is usually, a, and not usually every time, it's mm -hmm. an honor. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, it's rep also res represents a lot of years and years of hard work. Mm -hmm. And you just don't walk in and say, I want to be potentate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be, a prolific Shriner that has been working for his temple for years and years and finally got on, not everybody wants to be on the Board of Officers. Okay. And we have many Shriners out there, and right here in Alpena, that have made hundreds of trips to Chicago Hospital mm -hmm. that if they're asked to go on the Board of Officers, they refuse. They, they love what they're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't want to make decisions, they just want to drive kids. Right. So what's the role of the potentate? I'm, the potentate is like the CEO or head of the organization mm -hmm. for that shrine temple. Mm -hmm. uh, ours happens to be one of 197 shrine temples, and I think you, Ron, said there was four in the state of Michigan. Uh, there's Muslim Temple in Detroit, El Carafa in Saginaw, uh, Saladin over in uh, Grand Rapids, okay. and I'm Ahmed. Ahmed up in Marquette, Michigan. Okay, so really all over the state. Yes, that's, so anybody can join wherever they live, wherever they want to. Okay, um, so during the break we were talking about how there used to be many clinics um, mm -hmm. around the area for people to go and have doctor's visits and things of that sort, um, but now you guys have veered away from that and you guys are starting something new. Right, and uh, I... I'm going to go. What I'm going to tell you what we used to do, and then Roy's going to tell you what we do now. Okay, go for it. We would used to run what we call mini clinics. Mm -hmm. We would advertise the fact uh, that in Burton, Michigan, uh, we would be holding a mini clinic uh, next August, mm -hmm. for example, and we would get that word out in any advertising ways that we could. Okay. All right. We would have a doctor that would show up, an MD, that would donate his time. And as the children were brought in, he would evaluate them knowing what the criteria is for the hospitals. Because mm -hmm. not every child we can treat. So as these children come in, they're, they're evaluated, and they say, yes, this child needs to go to our hospital. Then we would arrange for a meeting and drive them to Chicago for an appointment. And the doctors would look at them there and recommend uh, a solution to the problem. Okay. And now we don't do that anymore, Roy. And now we have that number, uh, I think it's posted probably, I posted on your screen, that 
is a number to call our Chicago hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and you talk with the people down there in applications. They take the applications and any pertinent information like uh, birth, uh, uh, certificate, okay. uh, immunization record, right, all the uh, parents, records. all that information has to be recorded okay. uh, for legal purposes. And then they will make a determination whether the doctor, with the explanation of the parents, mm -hmm. they'll make a determination whether they can treat that child okay. or not treat them. Most generally, uh, I've never seen too many of them turned down, so mo most of them are all accepted. And uh, I was on myself on the Board of Governors at the Chicago Hospital okay. for 10 years, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so what are the qualifiers for children to be treated? Uh, if they've got it, I guess the main thing is if they've got a, like scoliosis or uh, any anything that they can't afford to do locally, then we will take care of it at our, our facilities. Okay. Uh, because there's a, a, a lot of people do not have insurance mm -hmm. or uh, any way of getting their children taken care of. Right. So that's what we're here for. Okay, okay. And you guys also said, I know you aren't residents of Alpena, but you frequent Alpena quite often. Yeah, the reason we do is, like I said before, we love it up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been up here ever since uh, the year 2000. Uh, our potentate that year was Todd Clayton. And uh, we have so much fun up here. Uh, that particular year, they arranged for the police department to come and arrest him and put him in jail. <laughs> well, oh, just a little fun, right? Just a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we didn't keep him there. Right. But, but uh, the, everybody rolls out the red carpet for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's just great. And these the ch uh, brothers up here uh, are a long ways from our Shrine Center. Right. And we don't get to see them a lot. So we feel that it's our duty to come up here every once in a while and meet and uh, have camaraderie with our, with our brothers up here. OK, fantastic. And why would you guys say your organization is so influential in philanthropy work and just to the community? I guess our, <clears throat> the CEO of the shrine, of that imperial shrine, makes absolutely nothing. Where some of the other organizations, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Ours is not. Uh, we don't get paid for coming up here mm -hmm. uh, or any other place. Mm -hmm. And that is the fun we have. Just, Hey, if you got money, <laughs> spend it. <laughs> so, uh, but most of the officers, there's, well, you got a few that are paid, like uh, a heavy physician or mm -hmm. an orthopedic surgeon at some of our hospitals or some of them. Uh, the nurses get paid okay, and uh, stuff like that. But that's true with any hospital. But uh, all, the, all the money, they say 97% of our money that's raised by the membership or donated by people, uh, it, it goes to our, our philanthropy. 97%, that's that, great. Yes, and that 97% puts us at number one mm -hmm. in the country as a charity. Okay. Because at a 97% rate of all donations being used right straight to the philanthropy, nobody else can say that. All right. I have a friend, a counterpart that was, uh, he was potentate in 2006 from Zenobia Temple. He just had been talking to uh, an older gentleman that uh, didn't have any children or any family mm -hmm. and left the shrine $5 million. Oh, wow. So a great organization to participate in, and you guys are doing great work in philanthropy. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today here on the well, show. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. All right. Well, that will do it for this edition of Insights. You can catch us back here next Sunday. Have a great afternoon. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.